cancer research, which I just underlined there. Uh, <clears throat> so I, I've actually, I'm an expert when it comes to cancer. So if anybody has any questions about cancer too, they can ask me. Uh, I'm, oh, here's the movie. Uh, the movie, The Immortalists, uh, is a movie that uh, stars me and Aubrey de Grey, and it talks about our uh, research. Uh, and this is a documentary that almost won Best Docu Documentary for uh, in the Oscars uh, in 2014. So it's actually a pretty good movie. Um, it, it didn't make the final cut, but it, out of thousands and thousands of documentaries that came out that year, it was an honor to be at least in the top 10. Um, I'm also the author of two books called Curing Aging and Telomere Lengthening. Uh, both of these books are available on Amazon.com. I recommend reading Curing Aging first and then Telomere Lengthening because that's the order they were written. I'm also an ultra marathon runner, which I uh, will possibly allude to later on, but uh, I believe that running long distance, as long as you do it slow and take it easy and quit if it quits being fun, is, is a great way to stay healthy as long as possible. Just don't be one of those people that push yourself so hard that you cross finish lines on your hands and knees throwing up. Uh, so. Let's get on with what we're talking about. And it's my, one of my slogans that I always say is bad things happen when telomeres get short. And so uh, what is a telomere? So we need to focus on that word telomere. And if uh, to describe what a telomere is first, it's a very small thing inside of us. Uh, and there's many of them. But to see this, we need to zoom in on a human being. And so what we first see when we zoom in on a human being is that a human, all of us, are made up of 100 trillion cells. And most theories on why we age, at least the good th recent theories, say we age because our cells age. So most of my research in the last 25 years has been focused on trying to uh, control the aging process in just human cells grown in a Petri dish. Uh, and then, and then when we find things at work, then we we uh, uh, test them on people and, and uh, animal models and things like that. And so far, whenever it works on human cells, it works on humans too. Uh, we zoom in further, <clears throat> and we see that every cell contains a nucleus, and inside the nuclei are these blue things, and those are our, our chromosomes. And our chromosomes are where all of our genes are kept. Uh, that give us our hair color, our eye color, make some of us smart, uh, some of us not so smart. Uh, but it's it's pretty much controls a lot of what, who we are. And the, let's focus on one chromosome here. Um, chromosome is made up of two arms, a top arm and a bottom arm. And in, inside of each arm is a DNA molecule. DNA molecule is a very long string of beads. Uh, the beads are called bases. And a typical DNA molecule in a chromosome is about 100 million bases in length. It's so big that it's all coiled up like a slinky inside these arms. And so you don't really see them because there's a lot of protein there too. But I want you to think of this really coiled up string of beads like a shoelace. Now, if you unravel that slinky and stretch the shoelace out, <clears throat> you, you see that on the very tips of your shoelaces are called Aglets, there's these little caps on your shoelaces, and that, that actually protects your, tel your, your, your shoelaces. Well, the same is true for our chromosomes. On the very tips of our chromosomes, if we unravel this linky, are our telomeres, shown here in yellow. And telomeres protect our chromosomes in a similar fashion as the aglets on our shoelaces protect our shoelaces. Mm -hmm. Now, if we zoom in, now un we'll unravel the slinky part of the uh, uh, telomere, and here it is linearized, and what we see is that a telomere is about 15,000 bases in length. I mentioned the chromosome is 100 million bases in length, so a telomere is actually quite small, shown actually bigger than it really is in these pictures here. But it's actually pretty small. And it's 15,000 bases, but that's only true when we're first conceived. Um, as soon as our cells divide, every single time our cells divide, our telomeres get a little bit shorter. And going from, and so, so it's, it's 15,000 bases on a newborn embryo, but as soon as our cells start dividing, there's so much cell division to go from a single cell embryo to a newborn baby that our telomeres have already shortened down to 10,000 bases before we're even born. 
And that's okay, because that's really no different than cutting one third of your uh, shoelace cap off. Your shoelace is still perfectly fine, okay? <clears throat> but the problem doesn't end there. Um, our, we still have a lot of cell division to go. We have to grow up, requires a lot of cell divisions. We have wounds to heal that require cell divisions. Our immune system is fighting viruses. That requires cell division. So there's a lot of cell division that occurs. And so throughout our life, all this cell division is causing our telomeres to get shorter and shorter and shorter. And when our telomeres get down to 5,000 bases, our cells lose the ability to function and we die of old age. Uh, <clears throat> that's a fact. That's every lab in the world doing any research on human cells knows that this is true. Um, it's the only clock of aging that's ever really been discovered in humans. Every other clock has been shown to be actually controlled by the telomere clock. Uh, and so it's playing a big role. But let me, let me go through this again. <clears throat> we're conceived at 15,000 bases, we're born at 10,000 bases, and we die of old age at 5,000 bases. And there's absolutely nothing we can really do about this yet. So that's what my research is all about, is trying to make certain we can do something about it in the future. We can slow it down. Okay, now, like especially with products that we're going to be talking about today or with isogenics, but at, at the moment, it's, it's still something that we still have not turned somebody like Betty White into a 25 year old again. So that's my goal. I hope Betty White stays on long enough, but I want, she's too remarkable a person. I want to make certain that, that we restore uh, everything the way she was, even though she's a very remarkable person, even at 96. So the bad things, I said bad things happen when telomeres get short. And the first thing that I want to talk about is that there are actually some people that are born with short telomeres. And this is a horrible, horrible, horrible disease. Uh, and these kids, they suffer from a disease called progeria, which is a short telomere disease. <clears throat> they, they, they're born normal, but then they start aging very rapidly. And they, they end up, they have a life expectancy of 20 years old. 20 years, and they die of all the same age-related ailments that normal old people do, except they, they die of 20 years old. Now, if we could find a way to prevent this telomere shortening, this would be a cure for this disease. And even though there's only 250 kids in the world at any one time that have this disease, it's a feather in our cap if we can actually cure this disease. I've met a lot of these kids, uh, and it's just, in fact, there was a one kid very prominent in isogenics for a while too. And I, I, I met him at several of the uh, 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 celebrations and stuff like that. I don't know how he's doing. I hope he's doing okay. But uh, I think he was young enough that he, should, he could benefit from future discoveries. But it's not the only disease. They're not the, they're not the only ones that suffer from short telomeres. We all do. Practically every disease you've ever heard of now has been published in scientific peer reviewed journal articles to be connected to the length of our telomeres. And that especially includes the top ones on the left there, cardiovascular disease, cancer, COPD, even degenerative disc disease. I, I actually spoke, I was a keynote speaker at a conference last year, or maybe it was earlier this year, in New Zealand, where the subject was how to cure degenerate disc disease. Um, okay, but everything, including the common cold now, has been connected to the length of the telomere. Keep, keeping them long is extremely important. So, what I want to do here is just, there is a YouTube video that's gone very viral about me. It's called uh, How to Tell What's Real and Not Real. There's a tremendous amount of hearsay in the, in the uh, world. It, it, everybody's saying this is good for you, that's bad for you, and stuff like that. But it's mostly hearsay and really find out what is real and what not real. I recommend going to a site called PubMed. PubMed is a database, of a government database of scientific peer-reviewed journal articles. To be in that database, you had to do a study. It had to be peer-reviewed by other scientists and approved. Okay, Books and press releases do not get peer-reviewed like that. People say things, whatever they say whatever they want because they're really marketing themselves. And, and if they say something that everybody else says, they don't get any good marketing. They gotta be, they gotta say some pretty, you know, landish things that are different from what everybody else says to get publicity. And that causes a lot of what I call hearsay. 
And so 99% of what we do nowadays is to keep healthy is based on hearsay, and which is, I think, a real big problem. But uh, yeah, you can go to that website there to search the database or just Google PubMed um, <clears throat> and search. When you do a search, you can look at the long, bottom line there. If you want to find out the role of telomeres in cancer or the role of telomeres in heart disease, just do telomere and cancer, something like that. And the end has to be all capital letters, but it's a, really the best place in the world to get away from all the hearsay and know what's real and not real. Okay, so let's talk about the solution to these short telomeres. And <clears throat> this first comes from the discovery that aging doesn't occur in our reproductive cells. The cells that produce our sperm and our eggs have no aging. And <clears throat> that's, that's a reproductive cell. They're also called the primordial germ cells. This has also been found that telomeres don't shorten in our reproductive cells. Um, and so this, this led me 25, no, early 1990s, <clears throat> uh, that's 25 years ago, maybe, yeah, 25 to 30 years ago, it led me to start looking at these cells to try to figure out why don't they have telomere shortening? Because I just got finished saying every time a cell divides, our telomeres get shorter, and all of our cells in our body are having telomere shortening, except our reproductive cells. So why is that? Well, during that research, me and my team, we discovered this enzyme called telomerase. And if you look at this picture, the, the, it's a cartoon. Uh, the green squiggly thing is the DNA molecule, the chromosome, uh, and shown the very tip of it, the telomere, and it's shown in the form of a double helix. The factory looking thing on the right is the enzyme telomerase. And what telomerase does is it binds to the very tip of your chromosomes and lengthens your telomeres. So even in our reproductive cells, our telomeres still get shorter, but then telomerase relengthens them. Cell divides again, telomeres get shorter, telomerase relengthens them. The difference between our reproductive cells and all of other cells in our body is that when our other cells divide, they get shorter and they don't get relengthened. And then they get shorter again and don't get relengthened and shorter again. So, <clears throat> so it's uh, so this telomerase enzyme was a very, very important discovery in terms of trying to figure out how to lengthen telomeres. So I said it's only produced in our reproductive cells, but what would happen if telomeres got produced in all of our cells? A lot of people think there could be a lot of problems, a lot of, a lot of negative side effects from doing that, but it turns out there are a lot of animals on this planet that already do have telomeres in, on, in all their cells. And that includes most notably lobsters. Lobsters was the first animal discovered that actually has no detectable aging. Uh, <clears throat> and they discovered that it has telomerase produced in all the cells of the body. People never really cared to ask the question, how long do animals live until after Darwin? And so about 150 years ago, people started asking the questions. But, but since animals typically don't have rings on a tree, you can't look at the animal and tell how old it is. So in order to find out how long they live, you have to be there when they're born, put them in a cage or an aquarium, and watch them. Well, 150 years later, lobsters are showing no signs of aging. Uh, this is a, the original paper showing that uh, the uh, longevity of lobsters is linked to the enzyme telomerase and the length of their telomeres. And what was really great is that you, you'd expect, some people would expect that these animals would be sick from all kinds of diseases like cancer and stuff like that. But the exact opposite happens. These, can't, these animals rarely get diseases. They rarely get cancer. And so telomeres don't just control the aging process. They control declining health due to age too. So lobsters aren't the only ones. Tortoises, clams, humpback whales, some fish and some birds have all been shown to have telomeres produced in all their cells. Um, <clears throat> they have no detectable aging, they don't have no telomere shortening, they rarely get uh, cancer and other diseases. Uh, Charles Darwin had a pet tortoise named Harriet. She only died recently at 180 years old. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, it wasn't from aging, it was from some virus infection she got. Uh, a humpback whale was found with a harpoon in it, and the harpoon was carbon dated to be 130 years old. Uh, that means that whale was older than 130. Uh, now, I did say that uh, 
we don't have rings on a tree, uh, but clams do. Okay, so if you look at these clams in this picture, you can see they have stripes and they get a new stripe every year. So you can, you can count, how old, count the number of stripes and figure out how old a clam is whenever you catch one. And in so doing that, they have now found uh, clams over 500 years old. <clears throat> and this is all because they have no telomere shortening and they have telomerase, they have telomerase produced in all their cells and as a result, they have no telomere shortening. Now, more recently, they did figure out a way to age, to tell the age of sharks and by something in their eyeballs. And in doing that, they have found sharks that are over 500 years old too. Well, personally, I wanna be like one of these lobsters or tortoises or clams or sharks or whatever. I wanna live healthy as long as possible until some meteor falls on top of me or something like that. I, I, wanna, I wanna stay healthy. So <clears throat> these are the animals that I just mentioned that actually do uh, have already figured out a way to keep their telomeres from shortening, but what about humans? And we just lost Casey there, I see, but here's the plan that we came up beginning in 2010, and that was with John Anderson, who is the founder of Isogenics, and he now runs a company called Dream Master, which actually provides a lot of the products that uh, Isogenics sells, <clears throat> and John, John came to my lab one day in 2010 and we had a meeting and we decided let's go ahead and use, because we, we'd already looked at natural products to see if any of the natural products would cause uh, telomerase to be produced in our cells, but we couldn't find any. And John pointed out that most people that produce natural products don't know what they're doing. They destroy the active ingredients as, uh, by various methods and 90% of the time you buy a natural product from somebody it's not even active anymore. John had a whole uh, proprietary procedure where he, he could take natural products, pur purify the ingredients from them, and they'd still be active. And <clears throat> let me just skip to the head. We had tested over 2,000 before I ever met John Anderson. And uh, then when we got some, when we met John Anderson, he, he sent us more to test, and a lot of them were the same ones we already tested, and some of them worked. So let me show you exactly what our strategy was. Uh, remember, our, we have a DNA molecule in our chromosomes. That's 100 million bases in length. And it's got these genes organized along that DNA molecule. What, so the DNA is shown as a gray bar there. And one of the genes is the telomerase gene, shown here in blue. Well, the purpose of the telomerase gene is to produce telomerase. So that's what this gene is doing. It's producing telomerase, shown as the factory, inside of a cell. Now, this is only true in our reproductive cells. It turns out that in all the other cells of our body, there's a protein that will bind to this regulatory element. The regulatory element is like a light switch that you turn your lights off and on, but I want you to think of it as a dimmer switch. So you can turn it on a little bit of more and more and more. But this protein, and that protein is called a repressor, binds to the regulatory element in all of our cells except for our reproductive cells and shuts the gene off. So what John Anderson and I decided to do was to take natural products, shown here in green, put them, add them to cells and see if we could find any that dislodge that repressor. Some ingredient inside the natural product will migrate into the cell bind to the repressor and dislodge it and turn the gene on. <clears throat> well, this is pictures from the lab, me and my scientists doing research. We used robotic systems. Ro the top left picture shows one of the robots. In fact, here's, here's another picture of the robots. We have two big robots. The one in the background is a million dollar robot. The one further closer to the front of the screen is a $600,000 robot. And this is actually the robots in operation right now, testing natural products that John Anderson had given us uh, to see if they, any of them induced, uh, to, uh, produced telomeres inside of our cells. Well, John didn't send us just a few. He tested, he sent us over 10,000 different natural products that he had purified himself. And we ended up finding 39. And I, I said, some of these we had tested before and they were negative. But John Anderson has a way of producing natural products that is like nobody else, that makes them actually really work. 
And so these 39 telomerase inducers were, well, at least the best ones were mixed together to make isogenesis. And that's what isogenesis is. And believe me, we haven't stopped the screening. Um, <clears throat> we have found additional ones. That's why there's been a second generation, a third generation, and a fourth generation of uh, isogenesis. And what I want to say now, and John Anderson's recently given me the okay to say this, because usually like isogenics likes to keep things secret, we are still screening, okay? And we have found more hits and stuff, and there is a new generation coming out, but I can't tell you when. Just keep your eyes open, but it, isogenesis is going to get better, and it's because of the work that John Anderson and I are doing together. So this spring, I'm going to start ending here with recommended reading. I mentioned my books before. Here, here's pictures of them, uh, Curing Aging and Telomere Lengthening. The one on the right is actually the first one, even though it says second edition. There was a first one, but the first one has got everything included in the second edition. The Telomere Lengthening is a book that goes into a lot of details. There's a lot of rumors saying that telomerase causes cancer. Uh, that's totally untrue. And my reputation and background in cancer research makes me an expert at being able to say this, where the people that are saying that causes cancers are not cancer researchers. Um, but uh, in this book, uh, The Telomere Lengthening, it goes into great detail that says that lengthening telomeres prevents cancer. It's the lack of telomeres that causes cancer. So we, because short telomeres cause mutations. I could spend an hour talking on that subject. I won't unless Casey invites me back to speak again. We will uh, be, just so you know, you guys, we will get that information. Not going to pass up that invite, just FYI to everyone. Okay, good. I, I, I'd love to have a talk just to talk about that one subject. But there's about 50 other subjects that I can talk for an hour on in each case. But uh, these books are available at Amazon.com. Uh, I would also like to recommend um, the number one cause, there's two, well, number one and two causes of accelerated telomere shortening are inflammation and free radicals. And inflammation plays a really big key. Uh, and so I have found that this book called Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease by Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn is the best book I've ever read on how to, how to reduce uh, inflammation. And it complements everything isogenics is doing. So but it's just like, I hi highly recommend people read this. And then also, <laughs> this is a picture of my identical twin brother, Rick Andrews, Herrick Andrews. Uh, and he, he's gotten really into this book too. And he has started a Facebook group called The Squeaky Vegans. Uh, it's, okay, so the book recommends that you be a vegan and that you kind of stay away from oils as much as possible. And that's why he calls it squeaky because you're, you don't have any oil and then vegans. But it, it's, it's a book that I rather rec highly recommend. If you want to join his group on Facebook, just uh, Google his name or, or Google, not Google, but uh, do a Facebook search for Squeaky Vegans or Herrick Andrews and, and then join. Um, I also want to recommend that people learn what foods cause inflammation and stuff. And there's a test called the ALCAT test, A-L-C-A-T. And the website there is probably too long for anybody to write down, but you can just Google the words ALCAT and you can find that. Then one other book that I want to recommend, I think is the best book I've ever read on the subject of just staying healthy and not aging. Uh, it's a book of supplements and things like that. It's written by Dr. Sandra Kaufman. Uh, the book's called The Kaufman Protocol. It just came out at the end of the last year. So it's fairly new, but whenever any book comes out like this, I read it and I always think, well, these people don't know anything about what, what they're talking about. But when I read this book, it just blew me away. It was like everything correct. And I highly recommend it uh, as a way to stay healthy. And again, it complements isogenics. All right, I'm going to end with kind of an interesting slide. Some of you may have seen this before, but it's kind of like I, I get asked questions all the time. Why am I so interested in curing aging? Am I am I like afraid of dying? Uh, and no, I'm not afraid of dying. I've done things all of my life that risk my life and I could die at any moment and stuff like that. So it's not like I have a fear of dying. What I have a fear of is missing out. I believe that there is gonna be so many great things happening in the future. I wanna be there for them, you know? And this picture here is actually from the movie First Contact, 
uh, one of the Star Trek movies. On the left hand side is, is shown uh, Zephyrin Cochran, the guy who invents warp drive to go faster than the speed of light. And he's played by James Cromwell. So <clears throat> I, I just love this movie because I know this is going to happen in the future someday where when he actually took his ship up and went faster than the speed of light, news all over the universe got word that, that humans had figured out how to go faster than the speed of light. And so the Vulcans came to Earth just to meet the person that did this. And so this is the Vulcan just getting off the ship and says, who is responsible for this? And Zephyr and Cochran goes, it was me. And they walk up and they shake hands. And as far as I'm concerned, that's going to be a very exciting day. And when that happens, I want to be there. Okay, so this is exactly my motivation. I'm not afraid of dying. I just don't want to miss out. It, it, I don't want to, we're going to be, have first contact and a, a bunch of other big things are going to happen too. I just want to be there for all that. So let me say thank you very much. Uh, we've been now studying telomeres for 20 years. And thank you. That's the end of my presentation. Uh, I'm gonna, we're gonna put my hands in, I want my hands in that pile too, Bill. I gotta get my hands up in there. <laughs> we all do, we all do, and I'm, I'm working to make certain that happens. Mm, oh my gosh, and like I'm watching the, the feedback on the group and uh, everybody is like, you're coming back. So just FYI, on any subject that you will speak on, we want to hear from it for sure. We would love um, for you to share more on that. And thank you so much. Oh my gosh, for all that information. Um, and just that you guys, I hope that um, if you didn't know what a telomere was, you now know what it is and that you're as excited about it as so many of us that are in this group that have invited you to hear this amazing human share his life's work with you and his passion and his belief and his knowing uh, that, hello, we can all have our hands in the file because life is getting better and better and better and health is there for us all if we embrace it and we lock arms with people like Bill and the people that he has decided to lock arms with to really be on this movement. So Bill, if there was something too that you just, you know, inflammation has been a subject and uh, I'm in cahoots with, uh, you know, getting Mr. Uh, John uh, himself to speak on this. Uh, would you just elaborate? I know you talked a little bit about it last time too, but just with ending that and, you know, talking about how it's really devastating to your your telomere link too. just anything on inflammation um you know i know last time you talked about just that in, endurance running as well too and kind of how you open the call but just i mean those books as far as for somebody who's really looking for inflammation um aspects i know you know everything that isogenics offers is the exact opposite of inflammation but just from your years and years and years of research and your commitment to wellness anything that you could leave us with on inflammation would be super exciting. And then uh, I'll get with you for a time back so you can go even more on certain subjects. That was awesome, my brother. Thank you. All right. So, so you want me to respond about inflammation right now? Yeah, just, just a little snippet, maybe a tease well, or something. something. I think inflammation is the number one cause of all of our diseases, including aging. And the less we can, less inflammation we can have, the healthier we will be. Uh, but just about everything causes inflammation, and that includes uh, stress, both the kinds that your boss gives you and the kind that you get from doing, working too hard physically. Um, <clears throat> so psychological stress and physical stress. Uh, depression actually causes inflammation. Uh, it's been published a lot. Uh, pessimism does, but, but really the big things, and, and remember, it's not just inflammation, it's free radicals too. So a lot of these things, especially like smoking and obesity, uh, cause free radicals and inflammation. And we got to reduce those as much as possible. And again, isogenics exceeds in all that, uh, those areas. Um, the, um, uh, but I, I, one of the things that gets most uh, misinterpreted is endurance exercise. Uh, and, and, and yeah, well, let's say endurance exercise and also yoga. Yoga is one of the best things you can do to decrease your stress, and especially if you do what's called yin, Y-I-N, yoga, which is, is 
the least stressful kind. And it, it people that do this have longer telomeres and their uh, 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 friends at the same age that don't do yoga. It's well, my favorite actually, form of yoga. It must be incredible. <laughs> I, I'm a, I've got my own yoga studio at CR Sciences. I do yoga all the time. Of course uh, you do. Of course you do, Bill. And I was, I was actually the keynote speaker at a yoga conference, yoga and meditation conference in San Diego recently, where I talked about the benefits of yoga and how it affects your telomeres. Uh, but, but endurance running is the most misunderstood. There are so many studies out there that say that if you're a runner, you are inducing inflammation. But that's only true if, you, you, only if you're an occasional runner. So if, you, if your body isn't used to it, it does cause inflammation. And if you're one of those people that run every two weeks and then run a marathon, you probably still do pretty well, but inflammation will take your body over and the next day you'll be stiff as a board. But if you're, if you're like me, you run every day, okay? And you, you, you quit when it quits being fun. And so you never hurt yourself. You can go run a marathon and not have any inflammation the next day. Uh, and I think there's a lot of studies showing that, that endurance running and during other endurance exercises too help keep your telomeres long. So, so that's all. That's pretty much all I got to say. Is the key things are endurance running, but keep it slow, keep it fun, and yoga are the best ways to keep your telomeres long. But boy, do everything isogenics has too. It's just like uh, your products are loaded with anti-inflammatories. I got the yoga down. I don't so much have the running. <laughs> you don't have to run. You can kayak. You, know, you can ride a bike. It's just it's just endurance. Just focus on endurance, but don't race. Don't push. Um, keep it fun. Keep it fun. Fun gets more done. F-U-N. I love it. Bill, my brother, thank you so much. This is going to just be shared and shared and shared. And we can't wait to have you back for more goodness. Thank you so much for devoting wow. your life um, to this work so that we can all have the highest quality of life and uh, keep our hands in the pile as life just keeps getting better and better and things just keep rolling out. So thank you so much. Thank you. I enjoyed this very much. Absolutely. All right. Bye guys. I'll let you know when he's coming back. <laughs>